Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, JC Soto with Online Media 360. Today, my guest is Darla Yvonne. She's a coach, she's a public speaker, and she's a best-selling author. Welcome to the show, Darla. Thank you for having me, JC. I really feel blessed. I know you're a coach, and you public speaking, and you became a best-selling author recently. Can you tell me who are your clients? What are you looking for in a client? Yeah, my clients are people that are maybe stuck in their life or feel like they um, don't know their purpose anymore or have just stopped dreaming. And I am just passionate about connecting with others at this heartfelt level. And I love to help people that want to get results and take action. So when they come to you and they want to get going and take action, do they come with some fears? They're afraid to start moving forward. There's something that's keeping them stuck there. Oh, yeah. People get scared. Um, the two biggest, I would say, are time and money. I don't have the time to do this or I don't have the money to, to have a coach or I don't, you know, we, they all have an excuse. And so my first conversation is getting them over that paradigm of time and money that we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And it's what you choose to do with that time if you want to get results in your life. And then the whole money conversation, too, like if your car breaks down or if you have a medical emergency, you go get the help you need because you've got to have your car to get to work or to whatever. It's all in our values, right? So I have the conversation about money too, and it's all a choice as well. So I don't let the, the their limiting beliefs self-sabotage them before they even get started, if you will. Is that sometimes hard for them to see that? Like you said, the example of the car, you got to make the effort to start moving forward. Is that sometimes difficult for people to see and, and not get that message? It, it is. Um, I think for me, it's all about connecting, connecting with my clients at a heartfelt level and building that trust. And once I share maybe where I was, you know, years ago and how I came into what I'm doing now and, and get authentic and real and vulnerable, we create a relationship of trust. And then I can walk them through. Like I felt that way too. I did. I grew up really poor and you know, this is what I've experienced in my life. And I grew up with the paradigms money doesn't grow on trees and life is hard. And, and so I just teach from my perspective where I have been and where I am now and how I shifted that mindset. And you're as a coach when they come and, they say, well, Darla, I want you to help me. But I'm sure besides the fears, they have some misconceptions also about what a coach can help them do or what is required for them to do. And what are you looking? Because as a coach, you also, you're not only offering them the service, but you also can say, well, you're not the type of person I work with. What are the misconceptions they have when, when they come and contact you? Um. I, I I have a gamut of people I work with, whether it's um, they want more money or they want less stress or they want to lose weight or they want to find the love of their life or whatever. And so sometimes they come into it thinking I only work with business professionals or whatever. And so I walk them through and I just listen. I just come from a space of listening and then they tell me what they want and I see how I can serve them. And most of the time we're a fit. And if not, I have a, a plethora of, of resources that I can use to refer people that might be a better fit for them. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And, yeah. you know, some of the advantages of having a coach are for a lot of us obvious, but so for some people, they just, they just don't see it. They don't see why to spend the time and the money and have someone to pretty much, they feel like they've been told what to do with in, in essence, they're guiding them. Is that something that also you experience that people are kind of uh, resistant to being told or they think they're being told what to do? For me, I haven't had a lot of resistance because when people come to me for help, they want results in their life and they are feeling like they just hit a dead end and they don't know where to go anymore. And they want they want that guidance. So they're asking for help. And, and I tell them I'm not their solution. I'm just the messenger. And I have proven successful tools and a system that I can walk them through. 12 weeks of their life to get them results if they're willing to step into their greatness. And so I've been blessed with this ability in life to like see people bigger than they see themselves. So I just listen 
to what they, what their fears are, who, you know, what their paradigms are, or what their limiting beliefs are. And I can help shift that mindset so they can again start to believe in themselves. Money is probably one of the biggest challenges that people put in front of themselves before moving forward. Is that something that you also found that is, is common that people always talk about? Well, I don't have the money or I can't afford it. Yeah, I think a lot of people use that as an excuse in their life and, and, um, and as a distraction. So, um, yeah, I can help them walk through that too and, and get over some of their money paradigms and, and shift the way they think about that. It's all, it's all about values. If, once they realize they're worthy and that they matter and that their dreams matter and that they can get results, Things shift and, and then they're ready to take action. And the money, the money doesn't matter. Money is just energy. And once we can have that conversation, um, that door opens up and that, that paradigm goes away. And those are also limiting beliefs that Correct. people have, right? Yeah. Um, can you give me an example of how you help them move past that point? So a limiting belief, okay. Um, a limiting belief is, is an, an obstacle. Um, and it is strictly, like I said, it's just a delay or a distraction. And so how do I get people past those fears? I discuss, like, what it is would you love in your life, whether it's more money, more free, more time freedom, less stress, a lover, whatever. And then I help them with their mindset to shift the language that they speak. And that, and that, that goes back to my neuro-linguistic programming training. It's, it's that mind-body connection and the language we speak because our words matter. And, and it, it gets people out of their head and into their heart. And then all of a sudden, we, we can work through that and stuff. And it's about deservingness too, right? Like, they realize they are deserving. And, and so we talk about where they are now and where they want to be and bridging that gap to get there. And where are you going to be a year from now if you don't do today what you say you want to do to get the results you want to get? A year from now, you're going to be the same place you were now. So why not move forward and take action? Because we get one life. And I just feel so passionate that you've heard that saying, like, we, we all – what is the saying? I can't even remember. We're all a lot. We all are. Hold on. I have to reset my brain here. Everyone dies, but not everyone lives. That's what I want to say. That's correct. Right? And so people in their life, because me too, I wasn't living my life for a long time. And I didn't want to get to the end of my life and say, oh, my God, I've had this nudge and I've had this prompting and I didn't do it because I used excuses not to move forward with those promptings. So that's my passion is getting people past that. Like, where do you want to be at the end of your life? Are you going to look back and say, didn't pursue my dreams because I didn't want to spend the money and take the chance and have the courage to step into who I may have been. It's an investment in ourselves. It is. Now, we tell ourselves, you know, some stories. We keep repeating the same story. How do you get unstuck yourself when you were there? What was the spark that said, well, I need to get something going here? Because like you said, life is too short. I got to live my life. What was the, uh, the instant that you said, I'm going to get this done? Well, mine was, a, I was in the hospital and I, I was in ICU. I'd had, um, I'd had a few life incidents as I got in a car accident. I broke a leg and now I'm in the hospital with pulmonary embolisms. And this isn't some poor me story. This is my awakening. I woke up and I heard the nurses outside my room and I didn't know I was that sick. And they're like, she's not going to make it. And I'm like, oh, hell yes, I am. I am not dying. And I had gotten this nudge over and over again in my life that, Darla, you're not supposed to do dentistry. You're supposed to be writing a book and speaking and changing lives and making a ripple effect in the world. And I didn't know how to do that. So I never did it. And it was, and I made a pact with my higher power and with God at that moment. And I said, if I can live to get out of ICU and go on with my life, I'm going to do what I've been prompted to do. And I'm going to listen. And so that was me listening to my intuition. And that got me unstuck. So what I did first, hired a coach. Coaches have coaches. I will always have a coach, sometimes two coaches. And I'm going to be a product of my product. If I, if 
I'm going to coach, I'm going to be being coached. I always want to grow. If we're not growing, we're dying, right? So, That's right. And yeah, we yeah. got to learn every day. We got to keep on learning and, and growing. Yeah. I read your book, and I know you went through a lot of uh, uh, difficulties and obstacles and uh, experiences in your life. So we're going to touch on that in a minute because I really want to talk about that. Now, what was the spark that took you from being, uh, you know, getting a coach and getting your own life in order and, and getting moving to start coaching other people? I kind of became a junkie in the personal growth arena, if you will. I started going to seminars and I went to another seminar and I went to uh, women's leadership stuff. And then I followed Tony Robbins. And then I, I met Wayne Dyer. I got to be on stage with Wayne Dyer. And I, I got to be around some of these great people. And I just kept filling and filling and filling my heart and soul and being a product of the product. And NLP taught me that too. When I got my master track in, in neuro linguistic programming, um, it's about um, getting better results and about um um, releasing this old stuff that we're not enough, and it's about modeling success. So I surrounded myself with other successful people because I wanted what they had. And I thought if I was around that enough, it's almost like osmosis. You are a product of the five people you hang around the most. And I've always shared that with my children, and now I get to live that. And I am really conscientious of who I spend my time with, what I listen to on the news, because it it seeps into our pores, if you will, and, and I want to model success. That's good. And I don't remember who was it that said, if you're the uh, smartest one of the group of people you hang out with, you need to get a new group. Wise man said that. So we got to keep flying with the eagles so we can keep learning and keep flying higher and higher. A lot of people don't want, it seems like they, they're afraid of getting to the spotlight, getting to that higher level. Is that something you also see frequently? Um, speaking for myself, I had a brief moment with that. Like, I remember the first time I stepped on a stage just, and I'm like, who am I to do this? And, and at the same time, I don't have to be a number one bestselling author. I don't have to be, I don't have to be Tony Robbins. And I still have a message to share. And if I touch one lives, that's all that matters. And so all of us have a gift. And all of us have a dream, and all of us have a message, I think, to share with the world. Whether it's a seamstress working in a sewing shop and teaching other people how to do that skit, like, we all have a gift. And and I think I just am really passionate about being an inspiration and that, that beam of light, and especially in such a dark world right now, that we're all capable. No matter what the obstacles are in our life, like we all have a message to share. And so step up on the stage and step into your greatness and shine your light and and don't be afraid. Like I get scared every time I step on a stage still. And there's going to be people that don't like me and that, that will call me out on things. And that's okay. I'm okay being imperfect. I'm not perfect. I'm just a messenger and I'm going to follow this nudge that I was led to do. If we yeah. can help at least one person, at least we're doing fulfilling our mission. Absolutely. And I think that's what we need to keep in mind and keep doing it because uh, they're going to be naysayers all the time. They're going to be people. They're going to be criticizers, judges, and most of them are on the sidelines. They're not really doing it themselves. They're just waiting for something to say. And uh, so yeah. we got to keep pushing along and help the people that want to be and willing to be helped. And uh keep our message going because otherwise that's like you said that's our goal our mission in life that's what we're here for we're not here to just take up space we're here to do something worthwhile and uh, whether we're afraid or not we get to spread our message and help other people and see how they they improve they change and they're grateful that we stuck with it to help them out absolutely i love that and that's yeah. what we're all here and i think when we show up as being authentic and vulnerable it's like when i met you at at my coach Gary Barnes uh, event, I saw you speak and, and I was just attracted to you because I felt this authenticity and like attracts like, right? So I had, I saw something in you that I wanted in myself too. And so um, that's where we collaborated. And I thank you for that. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad we, we met. We finally met because I know for a while we're all so, uh, Gary was talking about you to me and he was talking to you about me. And then finally we got a chance to meet face to face. 
And, right. uh, and that was the best thing that we finally had a chance to uh, sit down and talk, you know, and we, we talked for a while and we got to know each other and, and uh, kind of really match our message so well that, you know, it was unbelievable. It, it was, it's been great meeting yeah. you. Yeah. Getting to read your book and getting to know your story. So this is what I want to get into now. I would like to ask you to introduce your book and tell us a little more about what the book is about and what message you want to share with the world with your book. All right. So the name of my book is Broken to Beautiful by Darla Yvonne. And it's really a story of, of some crisis I had gone through in my life and how I got clarity through those crises. And it's about um, learning the lessons like I went through some crap in my life, right? Like I, and I'm just going to touch briefly, like some child abuse, domestic violence, had a son in prison, um, lost my career in dentistry from a car accident. And the list goes on, yet I wouldn't change a thing about anything that happened in my life because I wouldn't be the person I am today without these lessons and learnings. So therefore, I want to share some of my experiences, and not in great detail, but how I used my experiences and the tools I used, whether it was journaling or or, or whatever, to um, create a better outcome for me. And so I had always kept a journal as a child and as a young woman. And I went back and read through a bunch of old journals one day. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I started highlighting the same messages over and over, shining your light. Life is about forgiveness you know, and just relationships and being positive and trusting your intuition. And it just clicked. It's like, those are the chapters of my book. So I just went through old journals and I always keep a lot of quotes. Quotes speak to me. Um, hearing someone else speak. I, I've always written lots of notes. So I just went back and used old notes and put this little book together to maybe inspire one person to offer hope. And uh, I got to say, I was impressed. I know we worked together and I made it my mission to read the whole book, not only because you gave it to me, but because I want to read your story. I want to learn more about you. And I was so impressed that you went through all that and you still have that great attitude, your positive attitude, your, your desire to uh, share your message and help other people. That to me, if you can do all that after going through all that you went through, I think for most of us, there's no excuse. You know, we got to keep doing, do our part to make this world a better place to live. First of all, congratulations, because you're, you are made also a best-selling author. I know that was not the main point of the book, right. but also it gives me more visibility for people that really will be able to use it. Thank you so much, Stacey, for your help in that too. Yeah. Yes. The book took you a while to write, right? To, to get all that. You know, because I know you wanted the book to be more of a, a positive message, not just uh, like you said, it's not about all oh, poor me. It's about inspiring people, letting know that, hey, there's hope. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. You can make it through this and still have a great life. Is that right? Absolutely. I know I heard on an interview recently about two twin girls. They were um, adults now, and one one of the twins turned out to be a drug addict and a prostitute. And the second twin turned out in her life to be this big business person and highly successful, created lots of um, avenues of revenue and, and had great contacts in her life. And someone interviewed the twin ladies and asked them, like, how are you both beaten as a child and raped? And the things you went through, how did you turn out the way you turned out? Like, you're, you know, a drug addict and you're successful. And it, and what, what the final conclusion was is it's all a choice, and it's our mindset. One of the twins said, well, I didn't have any choice but to be a drug addict. Look at my childhood. Hell, like, that's the way I'm destined to be. And the other one said the same thing. Well, look at my childhood. How would I choose to go down that path? Like, I had no choice but to be better. So it's all in our power and how we choose to look at it. It's always a choice. We're always making choices. We're making choices constantly, every day. We just yeah. sometimes, most of the time, we're not aware that we're making a choice. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes we make the choice that's not going to take us the way that we want to go. So, that's but true. yeah, it's always a choice. And uh, that's a great story because uh, we see people every day that has the same attitude. Well, I don't have a choice. And uh, the fact is, 
you know, we are always making choices. We're always making decisions. We're always choosing which way to go, whether we do it consciously or unconsciously. We're doing that. Absolutely. That brings me to another point. I'd like to share this tips with the audience about something that I coach on, and I call it a results formula. And it's just really simply, it's it's kind of what we just talked about, like expanding our awareness by studying the results formula. So our thoughts cause our feelings, right? So when you think of something happy or joyful, you're going to feel happy, right? And when you think about a big to-do list I got to do tomorrow and I'm so stressed, So your thoughts actually create or affect your physiology. And so, and then these feelings that are created cause actions. So when you feel confident or energized, you take a different action than when you're feeling depressed or frustrated, right? So then we go to the next step and I say, okay, so now our actions cause results. And it's our actions or lack of actions that create our results. So follow me here. So our thoughts cause our feelings, our feelings cause our actions, and our actions cause our results. And so many people resist this concept. Like they just don't think that their life is a result of their own thinking. Yet it's absolutely true. Our power of our mind is so powerful. Like, and we're in control. That's right. We all make our own choices and our thinking We take that step by step or thinking at the end will determine which actions we'll take. And a lot of people don't want, yeah, like you said, don't want to accept that because that's too much responsibility. It's too much, too much work and it's too much weight on our shoulder to say, well, I got to think about it and I got to decide. And, you know, for some people, but yet they're still doing it unconsciously. You know, they decided to do this or not to do this and they see the action or the consequence or the result of doing that or not doing that. Yeah. It happens every day. Sometimes it is a, a, a very uh, difficult thing for people to see or to accept that we are responsible for our own outcomes. It's up to us. It is up to us, yeah. Where energy goes, where our attention goes, energy flows. Exactly. And so back to what we were talking about earlier. Oh, I don't have the time or I don't have the energy or I don't have the money or whatever the excuses that they don't want to hire a coach or hire a media person or whatever. Like they have their excuses and they're going to keep getting the same results they've always gotten if they don't change things up. And so, and it's their life. Like it's, it, and that's my greatest blessing. Like Jay-Z, I get jazzed about this, watching people transform who they become in the process where they start and where they end up. Oh my God. That just, that's why I do what I do. I that's, love watching the end results. That's the best reward. Yes. Yeah, seeing that progress. So I'm going to ask you for tips, three to five tips of how people can get going like you did. But I want to say that number one is to follow your formula first, because yeah. that's, I think that's essential. Yeah. So if you can give me maybe two, three and four or five tips on how to get going. Okay. So I would say definitely do the results for me. Like what you think about, you will create. So pay attention, like notice what you're noticing. Huge. A second tip I would say is journal. Get out, like write down what's important to you, whether it's money or weight or love or career, whatever it is that you have in your life, like write it down. Because once you get that out of your body, like it just, you answer your own questions a lot of the time and you're directed Like, yeah, this is what I need to do to move forward. Um, I do a morning practice, and I recommend that to to people, whether it's reading a devotional or reading something positive, a a book that someone wrote. I see Susie Orman on your bookshelf right now. Like, read something 10 minutes a day, something that someone positive, like-minded mindset, like, to put in your mind. So do that every day. Journal, you know, think about the results formula. And then... um, yeah, just notice who you're surrounding with and, and where you're spending your time. Um, I think that's meditation's a great one too, and that's not something a lot of people are comfortable for. But either prayer or meditating, just a couple minutes, two minutes, if that's all you can do, is to close your eyes and go inside and listen. Like your your heart tells you, and that's that whole struggle between the head and the heart. And once you sink down into the heart, the answers are all there. That's right, the answers are inside. I would say that's a huge tip, yeah. Especially the way we're living nowadays, we need to slow down and take time for ourselves. 
yeah. and look for the answers. And uh, when we do that also, our immune system is boosted. Our body is happy that we're doing that, taking the time to slow down. It's like a reset when we do that. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you something. Sure. Tell me something that you learned years back, when you maybe when you were a little girl, and uh, that you learned and you still use today in business or in life. Something a lesson that you learned years ago. You know, I can go back, and this I haven't thought about this for years, but it just popped in my head when you said it. I went to a real small school out in Kansas, almost like a hundred people in my high school, right? Like pretty small. But when I was in grade school, I remember walking down the hall and there was this big banner above the principal's office before you went to the gym and it said PMA. And I was like, PMA. And it stood for, and it had the little words, positive mental attitude. Mm-hmm. And I remember every day I would walk down that hall and I would say, yep, I got a positive mental attitude. And I don't know, I think somehow as a little girl going through the stuff I went through and then later in life, that got stuck in my unconscious mind somewhere. And the power of a positive mental attitude is stellar. And I, literally, I was probably eight to 10 years old when I first remember reading that sign and going, hmm, I wonder what that's, you know, but it stuck with me yeah, 40 some years later. Wow, that's amazing. That can make the difference between, you know, having the life that you desire or going the, the undesirable way that unfortunately that's what a lot of people do. They just don't have that attitude. Everything starts up here. We don't know the impact we will have on, especially a child. Like my heart really goes out to children, but one positive thing you say to that child, you don't know what's going on in their private life. Yeah. And one thing that you might say, well, just have a positive mental attitude or, you look amazing today or, or whatever, like that can change just a whole trajectory of someone's yeah. life. And yeah. that again is why I do what I do too. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you're doing that. Now you have any last minute tips? No, I just, I just love people. I love hearing people's stories. I love connecting. And I just, I really, if I could just invite people to go to, to direct message me on um, Facebook or my website, Darla Yvonne International. You can pick up my book there, and I'd love to sign it, or um, you can order it on Amazon. Um, and I really I want to offer a free strategy session for the first five people that connect with me and say I heard you on JC's interview or on one, one line media interview. Um, I am starting a class, a new class, mastermind workshop that starts August 17th. And um, I would, if you mentioned you heard it here, I'll give a 20% discount. It's a 12 week class. It's a group coaching. Um, that I'm going to be doing. It'll be virtual. Um, you can sign up for that online or. What's your email? Email. Yeah, Darla at Darla Yvonne International.com. Sounds yeah. good. Sounds good. And I'm going to have all your links below the recording actually for my listeners, all her links, her offer. Everything's going to be just below the recording. Darla, thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us. I know you're busy and then you've been traveling and I know you have a lot of stuff going. So thank you very much. Thank you. You mean a lot to me and I appreciate, I appreciate the chance to be on your, your show today. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for thank stopping you so by. Much. Take All care. Right. And to my listeners, this is JC with Online Media 360. Like I said, all her links are going to be just below the recording. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.